skins for Adam and his wife. This was after they sinned. You see, after they sinned, if you remember, after they bit on that app, on, it's not actually an apple, it's, some say it's a fig. But regardless of that fruit, it signified disobedience. And as they bit into that fruit of disobedience, Adam tried to cover themselves with fig leaves. But it was not enough. So God himself provided their covering. God himself provided the covering for their sins, for their shame, for what they have done. By killing an animal to cover their nakedness, God painted a picture of what it would take to bring mankind back into proper relationship with him. He continued that theme with his chosen people in Israel. Some of you yesterday went to Pennsylvania and you saw the Moses. Wasn't that wonderful who went? Praise God. It was a wonderful depiction of what happened in the Bible. But see, in Moses, it showed you how the Ten Commandments were engraved in stone and how Moses came down from heaven, not heaven, but from the presence of God down to the people. By giving the law, God showed his people his holiness and demonstrated their inability to achieve that holiness. Maybe if you follow the law, the Ten Commandments, actually it's not just the Ten Commandments, there's hundreds of Levitical laws as well in the, book, in the Bible. I don't know about you, but I really have trouble following the Ten, right? But aren't you glad that Jesus gave us his grace that this ten has been fulfilled through him. God granted a substitute to pay for the price of our sins, and it was in the form of blood sacrifices. In Numbers chapter 29, verse 2, it says, On that day you must present a burnt offering as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. It will consist of one young bull, one ram, and seven one-year-old male lambs all with no defects. Even in that day, if you tried to do this sacrifice, it would cost you a lot. I wonder what it would cost us to give this type of sacrifice. And even with this sacrifice, it is not enough to pay for our sins. You see, by sacrificing the innocent animal according to God's commands, Man could have his sins forgiven, and we can enter into the presence of God. The animal died in the sinner's place, thereby allowing the sinner to go free and vindicated. Leviticus chapter 16 talks about the scapegoat. It's symbolic of our sin. The elders of Israel would place their hands on the scapegoat, symbolically transferring our sins to the people of the people onto the goat. The goat itself was then set free into the wilderness, bearing the sins of the people far, far away. See, the theme of substitution is found throughout the Old Testament, and it points to what Jesus was going to do in the New Testament. The Passover feast, and we had it last week, it was wonderful. The feast of Passover. It actually pointed to a substitute. In Exodus chapter 12, God gives instruction to his people to prepare the coming of the angel of the Lord who would strike down the firstborn male of every family as a judgment upon Egypt. You see, Egypt had so many gods. And the Israelite people who lived with the Egyptians forgot the one true God. But they were still God's chosen people. So he made a way for them to be saved. He made a way for them so that they would escape the plague of the death of the firstborn. To do that, they had to have or find a perfect male lamb, kill it, and put the blood on the lintels and doorposts of their house. If you can imagine this, the blood itself, when they 
wiped it over the, uh, uh, the doorpost of their house, it actually formed a cross. They went over and down. It actually formed a cross, reminding us of the blood sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. See, in Exodus chapter 12, verse 13 says, But the blood on your doorposts will serve as a sign. It was a sign. Marking the houses where you are staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and this plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. That Passover lamb was a substitute for every male firstborn who would accept it. God carried that theme of substitution into the New Testament with the coming of Jesus. Basically, he was setting the stage so that mankind would understand exactly why Jesus came, what he came to do. In 1 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Jesus Christ. God's perfect lamb, Jesus, the lamb of God, took our sins so that we would be forgiven. He took the sins of the world from the past in the present and even in our future and laid down his life and died in our place. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 says, Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the Spirit. You see, the only acceptable sacrifice to God is a perfect sacrifice. Remember, the requirement of the law was a lamb that was pure, a lamb that has no blemish, And man being man has sin in us. Only Jesus, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, is the perfect sacrificial lamb. If we died for our own sins, it would not be sufficient payment because we are not perfect. Only Jesus, the perfect God-man, fits the requirement that he laid down his life for ours willingly. There was nothing we could do to save ourselves. So God did it for us. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, it says, But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole, and he was whipped so we could be healed. And that healing doesn't just translate to our salvation. See, salvation means to be saved, but it also means to be restored, to be healed. And this salvation is present in us even today. This brings healing to our bodies. When we pray, it is heard by God. And our dear brother Mark is a living testimony of that. There is healing in our relationships. Sometimes it's so hard that those closest to us are the ones who hurt us. But God said, love your neighbor. And your closest neighbor is your spouse. Your closest neighbor are your children. So as you love them, you are loving God. Hallelujah. It's amazing what God has done. Because, because of Isaiah 53, which was said thousands of years before he was to give his life, he took it upon himself to fulfill it. Jesus' substitution for us was perfect. Unlike the animal sacrifices of the Old Testament, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4 says, For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. So what's the point of the sacrifice? God commanded that there be sacrifice, but if the word says in Hebrews that it's not possible for these bloods to take away sins, why do it? Why do it? Because what he was saying here, the blood, the animal blood itself had no value. 
what the blood symbolized was what made the difference. The blood symbolized what God's sacrifice was going to be. It pointed to the ultimate sacrifice of Christ, being the perfect Lamb of God, spilling His own blood so that our sins would be washed away. You see, some people make the mistake of thinking that since Jesus died for the sins of the world, everyone will go to heaven one day. Unfortunately, that's not what the Word of God says. The substitutionary death of Christ must be personally applied to each heart in the same way that the blood on the doorpost was personally applied by those who belonged to God. They had to do something to receive that, that atoning, to receive that blessing. You had to believe. Before we can become the righteousness of God in Him, we must exchange our old sin nature for His Holy One. God offers a substitute. We must receive that substitute personally by accepting Christ in faith. In Ephesians chapter 8, verse 9, 8 and 9, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, God saved you by His grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. It is free. We cannot purchase it. It is free. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done so that none of us can boast about it. <clears throat> if we can be good enough so that our sins would be forgiven, then I can tell to my brother or my sister, I am better than you. But God said, even if you are better than your friends, your neighbors, it is never enough to reach my holiness. Amen. This is why God gave his one and only son that whoever would believe him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just like this picture. Right? So it's, it's, it's interesting, though, that people can put their trust in those slippers. It's flip-flops, and some of them, actually, mga spartan. Hindi pala matibay. Yeah, some of them uh, are not even strong enough. You know, and actually you can just kick them off the line and you have your own spot. But see, these flip-flops were more than enough for them to ensure their spot in the line. When the officer comes, they can come back to where their spot was because it was held by their sinelas. Right? Sinelas is uh, slippers in Tagalog. But see, what's interesting is Jesus himself is greater what than, than these slippers can do. He took our place on the cross. Surely, He saves a spot for us in heaven. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So you see, the resurrection of Jesus demonstrated that God accepted Jesus' sacrifice on our behalf. The resurrection proves God's power over death. It also demonstrates accepted Jesus. God accepted Jesus as our proxy or our substitute. Thank you, son. Amen. But see, there is a third. The resurrection is not just power. It's not just a proxy. But it also holds a promise. Hallelujah. The resurrection guarantees the promise of eternal life. The resurrection of Jesus guarantees that those who believe in Christ will not remain dead, but will be resurrected unto eternal life. You know, when you go out and purchase a home or a vehicle, you would put a down payment or an earnest money, right? It is a guarantee that you will come back it indicates, your down payment or your guarantee indicates that you are serious about the transaction. It indicates also that you are capable of completing the transaction. It also ensures that you're coming back to pay for the full price. 
You see, the inspired word of God guarantees that believer